Well, thanks for being here, Dr. Hedengren. We, uh, we're talking today about decellarizing kidneys, which is a research project that I worked on with Dr. Cook over the summer. And one of the big things with decellarizing kidneys that we got to watch out for is too much pressure in the kidney will rupture some of the vasculature and ruin it. So the big thing that we want to do is we want to get the flow rate of fluid coming into the kidney as high as possible, as fast as we can, but keep that pressure below 30 millimeters of mercury if possible. So why would you want to decellularize a kidney? Uh, first off, it's a huge crisis that America faces today. Uh, within the next 10 years, America will spend a trillion dollars on dialysis treatments and before the end of today, 12 people will die waiting for a kidney on the donation list. So the solution to both these pretty dang big problems is to bioengineer a kidney. And that's where decellularizing comes in. The way you get a kidney to be transplantable is you take a pig kidney and then you, you have it there and then you strip all the cells off of it to get the ghost looking kidney over there. And that leaves like a protein skeleton that you can put stem cells into and grow back a human kidney and go into a human with little chance of rejection. So how do we decellularize is we use this apparatus. We have a pump that, oh, I love that pen. So we have a pump that pumps SDS fluid into the kidney and all fluid goes into this bubble trap here in the middle and the kidney is over there on the left. Nice. And so as the fluid goes through the kidney veins and it tears off cellular material, some of the cells will get stuck in the veins and cause blockages and this causes a pressure spike and we don't want that. And what happens is the fluid gets blocked up and so the fluid builds up in the bubble trap there and that acts as a piston compressing the air, increasing the pressure, that reads back to the pump and says, hey, slow down, we're going to have problems. So. so in order to model this system, we took a first principles approach. We first looked at uh, the flow into and out of that bubble trap and then wanted to relate the volume of the liquid to the volume of the air and then relate the change in the volume of air to the change in pressure and we use the ideal gas law for that. And then we combine these three to create a simplified model that we then linearized and took into the Laplace domain to come up with these two transfer functions, one for the disturbance and one for the process. And these are, these are very simple, they turned into, out to be an integrating function which is a bit easier to control. And then we, we took this Q out term, the volume or the volumetric flow rate coming out and related it to pressure using Bernoulli's principles. And so we, um, we took that, again linearized it, and, uh, ha and our resulting transfer functions ended up being a first order plus dead time model. And uh, in originally when we took all of our constants from the first principles approach for our gain, it didn't, nothing made sense. Our pump couldn't a adequately create a response in the system. And so we took empirical data and uh, fit it to this model. And this is what we got. This is our process flow diagram. Where on the left here, we've got our simple model. And on the right here, we've got the more complex semi-empirical model. That, that was supposed to disappear. Okay. Well, disappeared. Okay, so, and then what we've got here are the tuning parameters we came up with for both systems for PI control. And here we've got the responses. On the bottom here we've got the flow and On the bottom here we've got the flow, on the top we've got the pressure responses to those flows. And so what we notice here are a couple of things. First of all, for the simple, simpler integrating system, we've got a slight offset. We oscillate around an average value that's a little bit lower than the set point. And the more complex semi-empirical model does a better job of maintaining that set point. 
And these axes here are in units of millimeters of mercury, so these uh, pressure spikes here that we see are not that big, and they're well within the range that we need. <coughs> the other thing that we see is this upward trend in the flow on both, uh, and that physically represents the cells in the kidney being stripped away, and we're able to reach uh, the maximum flow rate that the pump is able to put out here and here. Uh, we also see that the more complex model is able to reach that maximum flow rate slightly faster uh, than the simpler model. Uh, here we've got about 3.8 hours and we've got about 4 hours here. So we conclude that the non-integrating and empirical system does a better job for our purposes.